In today's video, we're going to jump into the Wayback Machine and spend a little bit of time with a single action classic, the Ruger Vaquero. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed, so if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell, and we'd like to thank all of our viewers for sticking with us and keeping all the wheels rolling. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Today we're back and we're going to spend a little bit of time with the Ruger Vaquero. And the Ruger Vaquero is a classic. And just like we do with every episode, we want to show safe and clear. And this is a little bit different because all you have to do is look in the loading gate, give a little bit of a spin, and you can see there's nothing in the pistol. No surprises, no big bangs, nothing bad's going to happen. And this is what's known as the Ruger Vaquero. And it's become another classic in its own time. And a lot of that because of you know the popularity in the 1950s of Western movies as well as Western TV shows. And in the early 1990s, you also see the rise of what's known as cowboy action shooting. And it was what you would call a costume shooting sport where people would dress up in cowboy outfits and shoot through different stages that were set up with like Western sets. And it would actually be like a three gun match where cowboy action shooters from a group known as SAS um, would use both rifles, shotguns and pistols to shoot an entire match. And um, the original Vaquero was based on the Super Blackhawk, which isn't really a modern um, design. Um, so they, what they wanted to do was kind of get back to the basics and imitate some of the best features that came from the old Colt single action. So the original Vaquero was based on the Super Blackhawk and was a little bit larger. Now this is the new model Blackhawk, which is actually based much closer on the size of the original Colt single action army, um, known as the Peacemaker. But this is a modern take on it. And some of the modern take on this is the fact that with the Ruger Vaquero being a modern single action, the trigger does not have a half cock, meaning it doesn't have a place that locks so that you can open up the chamber. It's either on or off. It used to be that you would need to have it uh, with an original Colt. You would have to have the, the trigger on half cock before you can open up the loading gate to load and unload. So what the Ruger did was they simplified it so it doesn't have the half cock and it only requires you to open up the loading gate to lock it. Now, one of the other designs that Ruger included to make it safer than the original single action army was putting in what's known as a transfer bar safety. So there's actually a bar that comes up to protect the, um, you can see this right here, that's the transfer bar. And you can see where it actually gets in the way of the firing pin. And I'm going to do this really slowly. Go ahead and keep the camera right here so you can see how when this comes up, the safety bar comes up to block the hammer. And that's something that wasn't included in the original Colt. And it's something that Ruger came up with to make for a safer design. And what that means is, is with the early Colts, the best practice for carrying was that you would only carry five rounds in the pistol because the firing pin basically rested on an empty chamber instead of on a primer. The beauty of having that the, 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 the hammer block or the transfer bar safety is that you can safely carry six rounds in a Vaquero rather than carrying five shots in a six shooter. Now, um, it's got a lot of great features. This particular one has a four and a half inch barrel. 
Um, it's in, in what they call polished stainless steel, but you can also get this in blue or also in what's called a, a color case hardened, which is really my favorite um, artistic type of finish. But I like stainless just because it weathers so much better. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is that it just has a channel for the rear sight. And the channel is not completely exposed until you have the hammer pulled all the way back, which means when the hammer falls, you're going to have a change in your sight picture because now the hammer is going to obscure the sight. And you can kind of see that a little bit. When the hammer's forward, you don't really see that rear sight. All right, now, the single actions are great. They're a lot of fun to shoot, but in terms of drawbacks, they're slow to load and slow to unload. And what you would do, and I'm gonna show you this in just a minute, is you have to open up the loading gate, line up each particular chamber, drop one in, rotate it, drop one in, and over and over and over until all six chambers are full. And then you close the loading gate, which locks it up, and because this is a single action, the hammer has to come back every time prior to the shot. This is not a, like a, a modern double action. You can yank on this trigger as much as you want, but with single action, the hammer performs one particular purpose, and that is dropping the hammer. Whereas a double has two purposes and two functions, cocking it and releasing it. So this is a slower gun to shoot, but in the hands of somebody that really knows how to use it, it's just as effective as any other handgun out in the market. Could you use it for self-defense? Yes, you could, but it has the disadvantages of being slow to load and slow to unload. All right, now over here, on this side is what you would call your ejector rod. And the way this works is, is you have to line up each spent case so that this, as it pushes back, you can see where you've got that little plunger, which is gonna push the old brass out. So you have to do that every single time when you are unloading and do this one at a time. Now, sometimes if the brass is heavier, it may just fall out. However, you can't count on heavy brass to unload itself, and it may very well need a little bit of help from using this ejector rod. So you can see with this illustration that it's not gonna be the fastest gun to use, and for home defense, it may not be the best choice. So. That being said, it's got a slightly different design of handle. And this is not something you get with a modern revolver. They would refer to this as the plow handle design. And it was very, very similar to the handles that they would have on the plows that they would use in the field. So they just mimic some of the technology that was, that was already being used. So that being said, we're gonna load this up and put some rounds through it. Okay, now this originally came out in 1993. Um, as far as the original Vaquero, the new model Vaquero actually came out in 2005. So the older Vaqueros are gonna be a little bit larger. The new Vaqueros are gonna be very close in size to the original Colt Single Action Army Peacemaker. So to get this going, you're gonna open up the loading gate and you're gonna line up the first cylinder and you're gonna drop one in. You're gonna move it over, drop one in. And basically we're just going to rinse and repeat until the cylinder has all of the chambers filled. Okay, last one, just like that. And you can see all the chambers are filled. And what's gonna lock it up 
is closing up the loading gate and then rotating it to top dead center. And you'll be able to see that um, these are going to be even on both sides when it's locked into place and you want to make sure it's locked into place. All right, so I'm going to put my ears on and we're going to run through the firing sequence and then we're going to show you how it unloads as well. All right, same as before, you want a good firm grip and unlike with a semi-auto where you have your thumb forward like this, you will get burned. With a revolver, you go thumb over thumbnail. And one of the things that you see in cowboy action shooting is in order to keep a firm grip, is you're actually going to do the work to cycle the hammer with your left rather than reaching up with your right. If you do that, you're gonna to have to reacquire your grip every time. So you wanna keep a firm grip and do the, let the left thumb do all of the work when it comes to cocking it. This is gonna come all the way back. You're gonna line up your sights. I got a little anxious on that one. It happens. All right, not my best day, but you spend all your time with a Glock, you get used to different characteristics, and you have to kind of retrain yourself a little bit. Now, you can either push them out one at a time like that, or you can actually turn the gun and let gravity help a little bit and let them pop out like that. All right, I'm gonna reload it one more time and try to redeem myself and show that I don't suck and give this one more go and try not to get rattled by the fact that I don't spend nearly enough time with this. And you know, it, it's, it's use this as a teachable moment that, you know, every Every gun that you fire is going to have its own characteristics and you can't always just pick up a new gun and expect it to run like what you're normally using. And for a lot of people who might carry a Glock every day, you're getting into a whole different animal when you pick up something like this. So. Once again, to get this going, you're gonna use your left thumb to pull it all the way over to the back, and then you're gonna go thumb over thumbnail to keep it out of the way. That's better. All right. I don't suck. I just got excited. I'm feeling better about this now. But hey, you know, there's no win or lose, it's win or learn. So we don't always have to live in a zero sum world where, hey, guess what, you know? You can learn more from your bad days at your range because it keeps you honest rather than uh, celebrating all your good days. It's okay to be humbled once in a while, and I don't mean being, I don't mind being humbled on video because it keeps me honest. And if you go through life and are never wrong, then you never have a chance to learn and grow. So let's treat this as a teachable moment that a lot of times you just can't pick up a gun and make it run if you're used to running something different. It is what it is, right? Let's be honest here. And you can learn as much from a not so great day at the range than you necessarily do from a great day at the range. Because many times failure is a better teaching mechanism than success. So you can't appreciate winning until you learn how to lose. And that's something we need more for people to learn so that they can manage expectations and also not feel entitled. So hey, guess what? You saw me suck with the first cylinder but I redeemed myself with the second cylinder. And uh, we all like stories about redemption. I'm feeling pretty good right now. So anyway, 
We went through and we talked about the Ruger Vaquero and some of the great features it has. And even though it doesn't get a lot of use and needs to see more use just so I can stay current with it, um, it's still a super fun gun to shoot. And this is something I'll never get rid of. This is one of those things that was on my bucket list. And now that I've got it, I'm never gonna turn loose. So anyway, we'd like to thank all of our viewers for watching us. We uh, appreciate uh, all of the great comments and the fact that we're creating a forum on our page and we're getting more people engaging and actually carrying on a conversation with each other on the page. And that's what we were originally hoping for. And the reason that's working is because of you. So don't be afraid to put into a comment. If it's totally rude, we're gonna throw you off. So let's keep it clean and keep it positive. But on behalf of Shooter the Series, my name's Ed Thorell and y'all take care.